adult education and lifelong learning, international development. Let me start by mentioning a few. Lifelong learning is increasingly being seen as a catalyst for social inclusion and sustainable development. Furthermore, adult learning and education is increasingly being seen as an integral part of lifelong learning. This seems natural by the simple fact that we all are adults a longer time in our lives than we are children and youth. So no wonder that adult learning, adult education should play a bigger part, a bigger role in lifelong learning. Also, when we look at the importance of primary and secondary higher education, in fact, we are adults a longer time than we are spending in primary, secondary, and higher education sectors. So therefore, no wonder that increasingly, adult education is being seen as an integral and important part of lifelong learning. The third thing, literacy is increasingly being seen as the foundation of lifelong learning. If you are not literate, you do not have access to continuing education, to lifelong learning. So literacy is the foundation of lifelong learning. And finally, many countries increasingly focus on translating the vision of lifelong learning into policies. Every year, the speed of scientific discoveries and their transfer into technological innovation is being implemented in production and consumption, and we all have to deal with this change. We all have to learn to deal with the change, to adapt to it, but also to influence it, to shape conditions for our own work life and our life in society, to shape the conditions for work and life. Countries participating two months ago in the high-level segment of the Economic and Social Council, the so-called ECOSOC, adopted a ministerial declaration, 8th of July 2011, recognizing the strong links between education and development, between education and progress towards the Millennium Development Goals, and that means placing education at the heart of development. Ministers furthermore expressed concerns about the persistent education inequalities among and within countries and the lack of progress on specific goals, including skills development and adult literacy. The conference in which we partake today here in New Delhi is based upon India's commitment following the Abuja Framework for Action and Cooperation adopted at the 8th E9 Ministerial Review Meeting in June 2010 in Nigeria. The themes around which this conference is organized, women's literacy, social inclusion, and sustainable development are interrelated and interconnected. We cannot disentangle one from the other. We cannot approach them without having as a starting point an overarching framework that situates lifelong learning at the core of our policy response. The standpoint of UNESCO in relation to the concept 
of lifelong learning can be detected in four major international conferences over the past two, three years. Yes, the concept of lifelong learning includes learning for employability, for social inclusion, for active citizenship, <laughs> and for personal fulfillment. But in the UNESCO perspective, this is based on human values. This is based on the human right to education. Values such as peace, tolerance, intercultural <laughs> understanding, and democracy. This is why I think UNESCO has a flagship concept in the field of lifelong learning. The four international major conferences they are the International Conference on Education, 2008, the World Conference on Education for Sustainable Development, 2009, the International Conference on Higher Education, 2009, and the Sixth International Conference on Adult Education, the so-called Confintia 6, in December 2009 in Belém, in Brazil. Two of the Millennium Development Goals explicitly address education, achieving universal primary education and gender parity. However, in neither of these efforts, there has been designated a specific role for adult learning and education beyond basic literacy and life skills. But encouragingly, the decade of education for sustainable development sets out a broad mandate in which adult learning and education can play a, fruit, a very fruitful and highly visible role. Among the many national approaches to lifelong learning that we see these years, I can mention a number of countries. Some countries with a very long historical tradition, like Japan, Korea, the Nordic countries, others, such as the UK and Australia, where we see now new developments, but also countries like China, Thailand, Namibia, and others in Latin America and the Caribbean, we can witness recent policies being introduced. If we go to the international approaches, I'd like to mention that still today, the four UNESCO four report from 1972, learning to be, plays a highly important role in the definition of national and international policies in relation to adult education, lifelong learning. Furthermore, the Delors Report from 1996, learning the treasure within, is being very much referred to. I can also mention the European Union's memorandum for lifelong learning from the year 2000, and the three adult literacy surveys from the OECD, the Adult Literacy and Life Skills Survey, the International Adult Literacy Survey, and the now ongoing program for the International Assessment of Adult Competencies, the so-called PIAC. <laughs> but also the Southern African Development Community has, with its strategic plan for lifelong learning, for lifelong education and training, played a role as well as the ASEM, Education and Research Hub for Lifelong Learning, especially with its network, National Lifelong Learning Strategies, with regard to citizens' motivation and barriers to continuing education and training. The Sixth International Conference on Adult Education 2009 was entitled Living and Learning for a Viable Future, the Power of Adult Learning. It was one of the most important platforms for the past several years. 150 member states sent in reports in preparation for the conference, and those reports were the basis of the so-called GRAIL 
that was produced and presented during this World Conference. The global report on adult learning and education, GRAIL. This report makes a state of the art of issues and tendencies at the global level around our planet in adult learning and education. The UNESCO Institute for Lifelong Learning, of which I have the honor of being the new director, has been given the task from UNESCO to monitor the follow-up of the endorsed commitments from the member states in the so-called BELEM framework for action endorsed at the Confintia 6. And one of these elements for the follow-up is every three years to publish a new GRAIL. We are right now working on GRAIL number two to be published next year with the theme Adult Literacy. Confintier 6 recognized the urgency of redoubling efforts to ensure that existing adult literacy goals be doubled. The conference emphasized that the right to adult education is an inherent part of the right to education. That lifelong learning is critical in addressing global education challenges and that all surveys and data collection should recognize literacy as a continuum. If we look and take serious literacy as a continuum, we will see that literacy and functional literacy is a big challenge for almost all countries in the world. According to the UNESCO EFA Global Monitoring Report 2010, we still have 793 million adults worldwide not being able to read and write, and 64% of these being women. A recent analysis of adult literacy in 21 countries in Sub-Saharan Africa using household survey data found that 22 to 24 year olds with five years of education had a 40% probability of being or falling back into being illiterate. People with seven years of education had a 20% chance of being illiterate. These figures point not just to an enormous waste of human potential and restricted opportunity, but also to the question of the quality of education provision. One third of the world's illiterates live in India. Over half live in Bangladesh, Pakistan, India, and China. If we look to functional literacy, illiteracy, we will see that even countries like France, the Netherlands, Germany, have very high figures of adults who cannot read and write at the level of seven-year-olds or at the level of 11-year-olds. So this is why I'd like to stress that literacy is now a challenge for almost all countries in the world. Let me now point to a few of the UNESCO initiatives uh, that are dealing Professor with this Carlson, question. Professor Carlson, we have four more minutes. Thank you. One is Literacy for Empowerment, LIFE. This initiative is a strategic framework involving 35 countries setting up strategies for implementing policies in relation to eradicating illiteracy. The Literacy Assessment and Monitoring Program, LAMP, is another initiative set up by the UNESCO Institute for Statistics. They have developed this program in partnership with many other international agencies and international experts. The E9 initiative 
UNESCO is contributing to the E9 initiative that has been created, as you know, to mobilize stronger commitment to the achievement of the six EFA goals. And uh, finally, I can mention a new initiative uh, that UIL is coordinating in cooperation with five West African countries, trying to develop psychometric measurement tools that can measure the impact of participation in literacy programs. After half a year, has there been any impact, or do you also re learn to read and write and calculate outside of the participation in literacy programs? This initiative is in order to develop an advocacy tool in relation to governments. So finally, how do countries now deal with translating the vision of lifelong learning into policies? In many continents, lifelong learning, adult education, is synonymous to adult literacy. In other countries, in other continents, it is also related to vocational education and training to the world of work. But let me finish my presentation with three conclusions that I think I can draw from many research studies and from evidence. It is only with an informed, literate, and active citizenry that we can meet the challenges of our society effectively. And this can only happen by making adult learning and education and literacy part of holistic lifelong learning policies and action as a transversal agenda that cross-cuts policy domains and mobilizes diversity of resource allocation. Therefore, it's high time for lifelong learning and adult learning and education to be accorded the full recognition that it deserves within a lifelong learning perspective. Second, it is only through a good quality education that individuals can be equipped effectively with the relevant skills and competences. And thirdly, the foundation for an effective promotion of adult education and learning consists of the political commitment of governments a stronger partnership with civil societies and the world of work and the allocation of sufficient resources. The International Literacy Day, 8 of September, is a reminder that all individuals at all ages have the right to access to good quality and to good learning outcomes. We are participating at the International Conference on Women's Literacy for Inclusive and Sustainable Development to demonstrate that in the empowerment role of literacy, it is uncontested. Efforts have already been made that we witnessed it in the country reports yesterday. But still, much is left to be done in order to engender literacy policies and programs in all their dimensions. Thank you very much for your attention.